Hey guys, well as promised here is my Onyx 2. Uh, I picked this up late 2006 from Boeing Surplus and I paid almost nothing for it. So, scrap prices are good on these things. Go out and buy one today. The Onyx 2 is basically an Origin 2000 but it has graphics hardware. They were introduced in 1996 and finally end of life in 2003 when they were replaced by the Onyx 3000 and the Origin 3000. This is a visualization system. Uh, basically it is halfway between a really evil workstation and a pretty monstrous rendering server. Uh, on the back we can see the card cage obviously. We have two processor cards, these are called node boards, uh, and as the helpful little sticker says, it has two 400 megahertz R12000 MIPS processors per node board, so that's a quad processor system. Here we have the graphics boards, and this is the um, IO6G IO board stack. The graphic system here is from Notes, so I might be wrong, forgive me. An Infinite Reality 3 setup. We have the Geometry Engine here. We have the Raster Manager. This is nothing, it's a blank. And then we have the Display Generator. The, um... Well, frankly, I don't understand how any of this works. As far as I'm concerned, the graphics system in any computer, especially these things, are like serious black voodoo. But, from, you know, the Vegas description, the um, geometry engine reads off what's supposed to be on the screen from the system memory. It uses DMA to pull it across to this. It throws it into the raster manager, which has a buttload of um, memory, uh, texture memory, things like that which then sends it on to the display generator. The display generator takes all of this great voodoo and turns it into something that can be outputted to a 13W3 monitor. Uh, we have an, uh, also to um, video out, uh, digital video out and things like that. The uh, IO6G stack, we have uh, digital audio out, optical audio out, um, video sync, SCSI, we have serial, actually that's parallel, my bad. Um, keyboard, audio, ethernet, the usual stuff. Behind this beautiful front panel here, we have, not that you can see it, the power supply, that sits in the front. We have the uh, router board. These units use a NUMA setup to talk to each other. It's not actually ECMP, it's NUMA, which means that each node board acts as an individual computer, sort of. In fact, each processor is almost an individual computer since each board doesn't do SMP on itself. And then you can, if you wanted to, daisy chain and stack a whole bunch of these things together. A, um, this is a disk site, as you can see, but you can take the module out of this beautiful purple uh, case here and have a rack with more than one module or a bunch of racks and have the module stacked together. I have an Origin 2000 in my basement, which someday probably I'll show you, and we can see how that works. However, Suffice to say, the router board that sits behind here is what you use to connect these all together. Behind this lovely panel here, we have the front uh, display stuff. We have, um, obviously, CD-ROM drive, disks. These are blanks. This is a 73 gig Hitachi that I got after it died four times, and they finally managed to send me one that actually worked. We have, you know, our usual lights. AC power, good DC, reset button, NMIs. Uh, a little display here that tells us whether it does or does not work. In my case, this doesn't work. It's pissy at me this week. I'll try and get it fixed so I can show you it's starting up. Key sequence and a diagnostic port. Adorable. Here we have the node board, or the processor board, of the Onyx 2. As I said before, it has two 400 megahertz R12000 MIPS processors. That's these here. So the processor sits on this little daughter board. We have the system memory, or the node memory rather. Each node board of course has its own memory. So, you know, all the memory is added together for the complete system. They are installed in pairs, here and here, to be interleaved. These are 256 meg sticks, so there's half a gig on this board alone and half a gig on the other one. You can see each one of these is made up of two little boards. 
but only one board axe connects into the uh, slot there. How cute is that? They've got these little wee pins in between them. It's just adorable. Well, anyway, stuff geeks like. This is slots. These are slots for the directory memory. When you have a whole lot of these machines connected together, like racks and racks, the directory memory uh, keeps um, information about cache, cache coherency and things like that. So when the NUMA is all talking to each other and it's trying to work out um, what processor is doing what or what no board is doing what, rather, it uses the directory memory to determine uh, what the memory is, the system memory on the board is doing at any given time. This is the hub ASIC. This basically allows everything on the board to talk to itself, as well as talking to the mid-plane bus for the IO6G, XIO uh, buses and things like that. Now this here is rather nifty, and I'm afraid you probably can't tell worth a damn, and I apologize for it, but what it is is a little wee pad of dots, effectively, and each one's a contact to the mid-plane. Uh, and they call it a compression pad on pad or CPOP. Uh, and you can see these rods that go all the way back here to a little Allen key. And so, what you do is when you slide the node board into the system, you uh, tighten these two screws first to mount the board in, and then you wind these down, which hauls on these big, hefty duty. Uh, lugs here pulling this entire block which is sprung at the back there and crushes the uh, CPOP onto the um, accompanying contact on the midboard to ensure that things line up. I'm not sure if using CPOP allows a higher density of uh, connectors there but it's still pretty cool as far as I'm concerned. 